This video is presented by Trax WA, Training Centre in Subacute Care. In this scenario, 61-year-old Matt has undergone a total laryngectomy for recurrent subglottic cancer. Today he's visiting senior speech pathologist Peter Graciet to assess the problems he's having with his voice. So Matt, I understand your voice has stopped working. Can I hear what happens when you go to voice? How long has it been like that for? A day, so just since yesterday. Okay. And did it deteriorate gradually? All of a sudden, okay. And when was the last time you changed your valve? About a week ago. And was it a normal valve change? Was there anything different about it? Your voice worked okay after the change? Okay. Have you tried having a nebulizer and cleaning your valve? Not yet, all right. Well, I'll have a bit of a look in your stoma and we'll see, okay? Oh, it all looks really clean and clear of secretions. I can see the valve and that's all there and it all looks fine. I'm going to start by just giving it a clean. Sometimes that's all we need to do. Give that a try. That's a bit better. So you've got a little bit of voice now. Is that your normal voice? No, no, it's all... Yeah, it still sounds effortful. Okay. I'm going to have another go because it seems to have made a bit of a difference. Give that a try. Oh, I can speak. It's a lot better, isn't it? That sounds a lot better to me. Is that your normal voice? Yes. Yeah. Does it feel like it usually should? Is it as easy as it normally comes out? Yeah, it looks as bad to normal. I think we just needed to give your valve a bit of a clean because it had become blocked with some dried mucus um, or some phlegm or perhaps a little bit of food at the back of the valve had gotten stuck, but we've, we seem to have gotten rid of that now and the airflow is going through really well. But I think we've solved the problem for today. Well, yeah, I've got my voice back. We might just review how you're cleaning your valve, okay? What do you do each day to clean your valve and your stoma? Well, I get the brush and I clean the centre and mm -hmm. sometimes I have to clear away some harder bits with a tweezer. Okay, so if there's any dried mucus, you're plucking it away just as needed, yeah? And how many times a day do you clean your stoma and your valve? Well, certainly first thing in the morning and last thing at night and, yep. and during the day when I feel it needs to be done. Yeah, perfect. And that's what we recommend at least twice a day or more often as required. So really, if your valve is looking dirty or your voice stops working, it's a good idea to give it a clean in the first instance or any time you see any secretions or mucus built up in your stoma or at the front of the valve, it, it means it's time to have a clean. So that sounds good what you're doing. While you're here though, we'll just review um, how to clean the valve because I think that would have done the trick for you. If you just gave it a good clean, um, we could have saved you a trip in to see the speech pathologist. So I'll just get you to turn around a bit so you can see what I'm doing in the mirror. And because it all looks nice and clean there, we're just gonna focus on the center of the valve, okay? I'm just inserting the cleaning brush into the valve about two thirds of the way in, not all the way through, gently twisting and I'm supporting the valve on the way out and twisting out gently. You can wet the brush in between times if you're pulling out any mucus or anything like that because you don't want to be putting that back into the valve the next time you go to clean it. I'm going in again into the middle of the voice prosthesis, gently twisting it's really important to twist the brush on the way out so we don't accidentally dislodge the valve. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, no problem.
So Matt, when did your voicing become difficult? Oh, just, just lately. Just lately, okay. Was it gradual or a sudden deterioration? Well, pretty sudden. Pretty sudden, okay. When did you last change your valve? About a week ago. About a week ago. And did your voice change after that or is it about the same? No, no, no problem. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a bit of a look at your stoma and see if there's anything I can see. So the stoma looks really good. It's really clear of any secretions. I can't see any mucus or anything that's built up that might account for the trouble with your voicing. The valve looks like it's in a really good position. Try and count from one to ten for me. I'm just going to have a bit more of a look at your voice. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I think it's to do with your technique. Okay. I think you're not getting as good a seal with your thumb or your finger on your stoma as you could be and I think that might be the problem. Um, what can happen if you're not forming a good enough seal is the air can come out around your thumb or your finger and not as much air is going through the voice prosthesis itself. It's coming out around your, your stoma. Okay. What we're going to try this time so I can be sure, I'm going to occlude your stoma with my thumb. I'm just going to ask you to count from one to five to see if we can get some better voice. Are you okay with me doing that? So take a breath in. And one to five. One, two, three, four, five. Great. So that wasn't perfect voice. We were still getting some what we call stoma blasting there, but it was a better voice. Would you agree? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, it was more consistent. So this time round, I'm going to get you to occlude your stoma and I'm going to put my hand over your hand to make sure we're getting the right pressure, okay? So when you're ready, I'll get you to count from one to five again. One, two, three, four, five. What did you think of that? That sounded better. You put more pressure on there, which I would normally do. It's hard to know how much pressure to put and we have to get it just right because if we put too much pressure, if you're pushing too hard with your finger or your thumb, you can actually block the front of the voice prosthesis so you're not getting air, any airflow going through it. So we'll get you to count from one to five again and just really focus on getting a good seal with your stoma. You can use the mirror to look in there if you like. One, two, three. Yeah, it, it's better. That was a lot better. So the mirror's made a big difference in giving you that feedback as to where your hand is. I think it's, it's getting used to it as well. Absolutely. And different fingers can give a better seal. For some people it can be their thumb, that it's bigger, has a bigger surface area and can block the stoma off better. For some people it can be their middle or index finger. So it's worth playing around with those things too. Yeah, a bit more practice. Yeah, it can take a lot of practice. It can take a lot of practice to get it just right. But you learn with time. Well, I have a problem, something could come across. And... Mm, that's a good question. There are a lot of reasons why your voice can stop working. Um, the most common one is just a bit of mucus or dried phlegm or even a bit of food can get stuck in the valve or at the back of the valve um, and that can, can block the airflow going through so that can affect your voicing or even make you lose your voice. Um, usually a good solution to that in the first instance is just to give your valve a clean with your cleaning brush or perhaps have a nebulizer to loosen anything that's there and that will often do the trick. Okay. Um, as we've just discovered, your, your technique, your voicing technique can impact on your voice. So too much pressure can mean that your finger can be blocking the front of the voice prosthesis. Um, on the other hand, not enough pressure can mean that you're getting air escape around your finger or your thumb and the air is coming outside of the stoma instead of through the voice prosthesis. I think that I try to say too much in one breath sometimes. That can happen as well, yep, so you're better off saying shorter phrases and getting through all of them rather than trying to talk off, off minimal air. There are other reasons why your voice prosthesis can stop working. Um, you can get a build-up of secretions in the back of your throat on the other side of the valve, the back side of your valve, that can stop the airflow through your throat. Saliva can sometimes build up as well and some of our patients find that they find it difficult to voice 
um, immediately after eating and drinking. So sometimes it just means you've got to have a swallow and leave it a couple of minutes to clear. Occasionally it can mean a more serious problem. So it can mean that your um, voice prosthesis has become partially dislodged. It's not in the right spot in your tracheoesophageal puncture. Or it can mean that the voice, is, the voice prosthesis isn't the right size. It could be too short or too long and that can interfere with your voicing as well. Um, if any of those things happen, you really need to see a speech pathologist or an ENT um, as soon as possible. Trax WA would like to thank the staff and management of Sir Charles Gardner Hospital for their involvement in this project. This project received funding from the Australian Government.